Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video about something that I've got in here to try. Now, a while ago, I did a video series where I built a 500 class quadcopter running RD Pilot with all the usual gubbins and it kind of goes through and it's designed for those of you that are relatively new to RD Pilot and kind of goes through all the steps. One of the things that I've been keeping an eye on is, are there any cheaper ways that you can land precisely every single time? Now, the way it tends to work is that you'll get a GPS lock, and when you arm the model, it will store that location as the location to come home to. When you flick return to home, then it will fly back, hover over that location and descend. And depending on the quality of the lock and also how well it's coping with things like wind, it'll land anything up to a meter, a meter and a half away from where you actually arm the model. There are instances, however, where you want a much more precise landing location than that, where you want it to land within a handful of centimeters rather than something that's going to be measured in meters. Now you could implement something like RTK GPS, real-time kinematic GPS systems. They provide very, very accurate setups, but they're reasonably complicated to set up. However, this could be an option. This is the precision landing system from an outfit called Landmark. Now I've got this in because this is relatively cheap compared with some of the other professional systems. So for example, in the past, I've looked at things like IR lock. That's cost thousands of pounds, thousands of dollars. But this is quite a cute little device. And it's actually inside of here, there is a little Raspberry Pi and a little camera. And what it's doing is actually sending Mavlink data to the flight controller. So when it's hovering over a very, very specific target, something that looks a little bit like that, it's actually telling the flight controller exactly where it is above that landing position. So as it descends, it lands exactly on it every time. So talking to the chap who actually designed this system, he designed it to meet his own personal needs. He was looking for a precision landing system that was a lot less expensive. His original idea was to use a Raspberry Pi and a camera so he could see a landing icon on a pad on the ground, but it's proved incredibly complex and time consuming to get it working. But he's cracked it and released it as a product and it allows precise landing and position hovering as well that costs a lot less than some of the other professional systems. So how does it work? Well, you mount this thing looking down, obviously, uh, ideally with the X mounted forward, although you can rotate it around if you want it mounted kind of long ways, but most commonly you're going to mount it as shown in the image. You're going to connect it up to your flight controller via one of the spare telemetry ports or UART, and then you're going to set it up in Ardu Pilot. The instructions are actually inside the box, but I'll also put links down below. It's not particularly tricky or complicated setup. You're just going to set the serial board on the UART for 23400, set the serial protocol for Mavlink 2, have PLND enabled. You're going to have to set precision landing type as companion computer because it's the Raspberry Pi that's going to be sending the messages and the precision landing your align if you are going to mount it rotated then you can fix it using that setting. Then what you do is you attach the supplied landing target onto your landing mat or the landing pad or whatever it is that you have access to. And then that's pretty much all you have to do. It's relatively easy. The quad or the VTOL will automatically be sent position information from the Raspberry Pi inside the precision landing system. And we'll use it to make sure that it lands exactly on top of those marks. You can also download different versions of the landing target. There is a link. Again, I'll put that down below so you can have a look. The trick is, though, you have to be very careful about the size that you print it out because the size and the relative position of everything is how the camera and the Raspberry Pi are working together with the software that's been developed by these guys to make sure that it sends the right information about the landing position and height and all that stuff back to the flight controller. Now, you might have noticed that these aren't QR codes. These are actually called April codes. 
there's the main big one and the three smaller tags increase the robustness and landing accuracy the system actually uses all four of the tags to localize the target it still works with only a single tag visible but the additional tags provide redundancy uh, more details about why there are four and how all that works in details are on the landing targets page only a couple of little pro tips about this. There's a landing called Precision Land Strict Parameter. Uh, if you set that to zero, then that basically says it's not strict. That means the vehicle will perform a precision landing if the target is visible. If it's not, then it'll land normally. So that's probably how I'm going to set mine up here. You can also set the Precision Land Enabled Parameter to zero. That completely disables all the precision landing stuff. Um, I will probably have that enabled when I fit this onto my quadcopter and play with it when the weather gets better. Only a handful of things to watch out for with this. Uh, you are going to need a spare UART or serial port on your flight controller to connect this to. It's going to pull about half an amp, so make sure that you are uh, connecting it to a flight controller that has that kind of capacity or power it separately. You're going to need decent light levels for the target so it can be seen. And I'd also recommend reading all the documentation on the landmarklanding.com pages before you get into this. Again, links are down below. And when printing your own landing targets, watch out for that size they need to be one specific size for this to work great so i'm planning to play with this when the weather improves on my own quadcopter here so i'll probably make another video when i get to play with it but i wanted to share this because this is a great option for those of you that want the ability to precisely control where your model is going to land without spending a fortune Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.